you and I started messaging. Yeah. We, we were up late a couple of nights actually messaging mm -hmm. about um, some stuff you were going through and some people that were making videos about you. And it was like breaking my heart. So next time we sat down to record, I kind of just did like a, you know, that you never seen that Britney Spears video with the guy in the sheet. Leave, and Britney, like, alone. leave Britney alone. I did like a leave Gerard alone because... I don't think it was specifically Gerard. It was everybody. It was because you know, yeah, like it, it got a I, little it was, crazy. We wanted to actually talk yeah. about like why are people so mad and who are they actually mad at? Yeah. And we did we did a whole thing about that. But we, I want to hear it from your side. What was it like for you going through all of that at the time? As much as I don't want you to go into everything that yeah. we talked about, if you don't want to. No, but. no, not at all. Um, well, I, I, there's a lot of common misconceptions about what happened at G4, and there was a Washington Post article that came out that got a majority of it right details were a bit smudgy um but you know my journey into g4 uh was definitely rough starting into it um i auditioned nine times over mm. 10 months to oh join the team wow i had nine different auditions and every single time it was great we love this but now do this mm. and great we love this but now do this and so um i got the audition offer in in the middle of 2020 shortly after the viral like G Force coming back trailer played, um, and so I auditioned and auditioned auditioned, and then at the end of the year I did a video with Adam Sessler of like the the most anticipated games of 2021 or 2022. It's 2021, and uh, then I heard nothing for like four or five months, and I was and I saw them announcing like oh Austin Creed and Golden Boy and Avili May, and I was like oh these are all the great people. Oh, you weren't in like the first round. I was I was. The second to last host that was announced. Wow! Wow! Um, or That's crazy. Or third, I don't yeah. want to skip ahead, but to go from there to where you ended up. Yeah, that's yeah. Wild. Uh, as as Cody Rose would say, uh, from undeniable to, or from undesirable to undeniable is yeah. kind of how it happened for me. Um, and so when I joined the team, they kind of put us in pods. Like you're in the Attack of the Show pod, you're in the esports pod, and you're in the X Play pod. Uh, and the X Play pod was just me and Adam Sessler for months. And there was no indication as if that pod was going to be growing, if they had other people. And then uh, like two months before launch, we got Corey, the Black Okage, and then Frost joined the team. Mm -hmm. And so, um, which which they're they're great to work with. They, as far as like working with them professionally, they were, they were amazing. They always showed up. They put all of their heart into what they did. Um, and uh, my problem, not with them, but with what was happening on X-Play, was that we didn't have enough time to chem test. The Attack of the Show team, they did like rehearsals and improv together, and I was a part of the Attack of the Show team. So I would do rehearsals. I would we'd go and do improv together. We'd do escape rooms together, like genuinely bonding outside of work to get the synergy right. Right. Um, X Play did not have that same time or treatment because we were making content before the launch of the relaunch of G Four. So we mm. were making video essays with producers and writers and we had to keep producing content before to get people excited and ramped up for the relaunch. Um, and so when we finally had the relaunch, we had all these new producers and new writers and we had great ideas and great chemistry, but there was not enough rehearsal time. There was not enough of a runway for us to experience growth or, or for lack of a better term, um, conflict, right? Mm -hmm. we, did, we didn't have the chance to like figure out how to be funny with each other or to have moments where we could listen to each other. Right. And from the get-go, to my understanding, the original X-Play and Attack of the show, there was very much a, well, there's the Attack team and there's the X-Play team. Mm. And I was under the belief that that's not a thing. Like, we're all under one umbrella, so why are we versus each other? Yeah. And immediately out the gate, that was true. There was like, well, you belong to X-Play, so you can't be on Attack of the Show. Or Attack of the Show wants to borrow you, but you can't go over there permanently. And so I was one of the few that, talent that was kind of all over the place. Um, and uh, in, my t in the short time, in those first few months, I was scared. I, like, wasn't having fun hosting X-Play. It had been my dream. I grew up watching yeah. Morgan Webb and Adam Sessler mm -hmm. and you know like at Best Buy in the break room between setting up my displays I'd go watch you know them talk about their games and well your and, show is your your YouTube channel is structured like a, a TV show exactly and mm -hmm. it, it was very much based off of the root of X-Play it's yeah. it, there's no denying that's where the stem was and so that's why I was so surprised it took me so long to interview and, and audition only to then not do anything for six, seven months, but to do these streams to get ready for the launch. And so 
we had launched, we had a couple of episodes of X-Play kind of happen, and um, as an improv theater kid, I felt like something was wrong. Just mm. I, I, I didn't, I don't know if it was a me thing, I didn't know if it was the other hosts or the writers and producers, and a lot of what I realized what it was, was we were expected to have perfect chemistry out the gate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when you guys had your first episode of your podcast, you probably knew, hey, this is going to be rough, at least for an episode we or two. We were perfect. <laughs> were you? No. Check the clip. Absolutely. Check the clip. <laughs> I asked. <laughs> he wanted to throw out the first I asked episode. Yeah. So many times yeah. to throw it away. Yeah. But I forgot about that. to refilm it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> yeah. You dragged me out here. Yeah. We uh we had uh in the first two and a half months of X Play, we had a lot of content that I was I, I don't like the word cringe, because to me, uh cringe is just another another way of hiding the ability to trying to confidently do something. Yeah. Right? Especially in theater. You're taught to yes and everyone all the time and mm. to to be there. But there was a lot of content that like didn't reflect me as a person, didn't reflect um, the the vibe of what I wanted X Play to be. And I'm not the guy in charge. I'm only a piece of it, right? We're a huge team of producers and writers and and directors and and hosts. So everyone kind of had a say in how things went, which was great. And the team we had was awesome. We were all learning to work well together but those first few months were rough because we didn't have that time that attack of the show did so when you saw attack of the show you saw attack of the show when you saw x play you didn't know if you were seeing a podcast or an interview show or a review show and that was just on twitch and youtube but if you watch the tv version of x play it was the exact same show that everyone grew up with Mm. and no one watched it on tv yeah Mm. so when they saw it on youtube and twitch they were like, well, this is not my ex play. This is not what I grew up with. Yeah. Like, why is there a fat bearded guy here? Where's Morgan <laughs> Webb? Like, you know, that's that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And in those first few months, we had so many, like, I want to say gotcha moments where we had sound clips and sound bites that weren't well researched, that were just like opinion pieces, just mm-hmm. saying things that we felt. Mm-hmm. But our audience was like, you guys are journalists. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, that's a hard mm-hmm. transition too for somebody right. who usually is a YouTuber. To transition into doing games journalism, right? What well, even is the difference anyway, though? At this point nowadays, they're not, they're all one, almost one and the same, yeah. right? Giant Bomb is a prime example of that, right? Yeah. You have I guess these, it's an entity versus a guy, right? Yeah. Right, Gru- uh, uh, a corporate entity or group of people versus one person, right? right? Yeah, Easy right. Allies is a great example of that. Kind of Funny is a great example of that. Right. What's Good Games example of that? Where they're collective of folks who on their own right are content creators or personality hosts. And when they come together, they kind of have like a filtered lens Mm -hmm, that they all collaborate with. And that's kind of what we were trying to do with X-Play. And then of course the stuff happened with, with, with the rant with, with Frosk, um, which uh, I don't want to dive too much into because there's so many theories out there of what was said and why it was said and how it was said. And enough people have commented on it and I feel like I've, I don't need to add to it. Um, what I will say is um, I'm I'm bummed that I'm bummed on both ends. Like I understand why people got mad, uh, but I don't think they were actually listening to what was being said. No, no. not at all. Not they at were there. Like if you listen to what was being said, and if you look to the moments before, the moments after, and what was said, um, Adam Sesser said something that was really kind, and he said uh, something on the lines of, "If you at home." grew up watching me and Morgan do X play and you thought that I did not have a say in who the hosts were in the show. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. I wanted to work with these people because I saw something in them. Mm -hmm. I saw the future and the possibilities burn bright and that's why they're here. And to hear Adam Sessler put us over in that way was such a a kind thing in the moment. Yeah. And that's why everyone in the room is celebrating because we all feel like, Hey, like we're trying our best to make this show not be politically aligned with anyone. Just yeah. make a show that allows people to feel welcome, warmed, accepted, have fun making fun of each other, and more importantly, talk about games and love games. And those that first 24 hours, you saw people all into it. Everything after that was just gone. It was all So wait, did he say that directly before Frost said He said it after she said it. Oh, okay. So, so it was like charged by but that. But the clip, the clip that was cut out, did yeah. not include that part. No, yeah, that clip. Yeah. Can I yeah. ask two questions about that moment in time? Sure. Uh, one, would you agree that what was said by Frost is completely true and a message that people needed to hear, but time and place maybe wasn't the 
best to yes. give that message. Yes. Yeah. I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I it kind of just came out of nowhere, and I think that's what really struck people so. But I think harsh, the, the the problem with that message is that there's there's where is the good time and place, right? You know, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, so somebody has to kind of take the heat for yeah. saying that. What is what a? I want to hear what you think, but would a standalone video maybe have had a more impactful message? I don't think any video at all would have. I think a standalone message anything. would have changed anything. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, but the moment before everything happened, um, at that point, I had made it very clear, hey, we need to rehearse stuff. So, we were mm-hmm. rehearsing things in advance. Mm-hmm. And that segment that we were doing was about um, uh, things in video games that we don't like, like common tropes, right? You know, oh, the games, there's not enough game save files, or the graphics are always weird in GTA games, whatever it is. And um, we had just come back from covid our studio got shut down because there was a massive covid outbreak and yeah. so all they shut us down throughout the whole holiday and in that time we had several videos that went viral on different platforms and so i was looking at that data and going okay how do we prevent this from happening again mm-hmm. let's take all of the negative air that people could potentially say about us by rehearsing choosing our choices carefully uh you know working with writers and producers to like not not say controversial things but to say accurate things you know if we're going to say oh i don't think god of war is going to be good great let's like say why let's talk yeah. about the experience you know and, and yeah. really think about what we're saying because during that holiday break we shot six episodes back to back that were just like top of the list like say your random hot take about ubisoft or nintendo or whoever and those were the videos that sparked a lot of people going they get like clipped out of context. Yeah, people are going like, "Oh, this version of X Play is not good yeah, or not yeah. my, my style." Where, where in actual fact, giving hot takes is like a fun thing that a lot of creators do. It's right, like a which fun, w- which yeah. was the video. point of the videos, right? Yeah. Is that we're just kind of being like, say whatever you want. But for um, some reason, you guys are supposed to be above that or you're, you're below now that. Categorized or because game journalists, game yeah. journalists, or yeah. TV yeah. host, or yeah. both. Right. Yeah. More more in the fact, people are looking for reasons to. Right. Yeah. To, to piss on you. Right. To put it politely because um, I can't sway here. So so during the lunch break, I had talked to a couple of producers and writers about things I noticed. Like, hey, I, I noticed that this kind of stuff is happening and I'm not the ju- I'm not the guy in charge. I'm not the one who calls the shots. But I was like, hey, I think we should try and make some more well-prepared stuff. Like really write stuff out. Um, and I did not want to be in the segment that was being hosted the the one that we're gonna do right because i'm like not a negative guy in that way like if yeah. you have to really do something with the e-shop to piss me off right yeah that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. like that's where my insanity yeah, goes right. but for the most part i'm that guy that's like game good graphic good um and so i just i tried to post some ideas of like maybe we should like try and lay off the negativity and kind of embrace the good things about games and why we love them because that's always been my aesthetic and pride and joy negativity sells though it's true but <laughs> But there was well, no one. There was no one in the room that was like, "We have to get those negative views, kid." Like no one had yeah. that perspective. Okay. It was just like we were pitching every day. Was like, right. "Let's pitch this idea. Let's do this." We we're just seeing what stuck to the wall because we just wanted to see mm-hmm. what was fun and what people enjoyed. And so, um, during lunch, Frost prepared her her bit, but I didn't know it was going in the teleprompter. Like, there's a moment in the in the moment you can see where i go oh this is not in the teleprompter mm. this was not there during rehearsals had no idea it was coming. i said that on purpose because it genuinely was true yeah i yeah. want to set up the fact that oh this is we are off the rails we are going somewhere and we didn't know where she was going so you hadn't no one in the room had any idea no at least on the couch we yeah. had no idea. Some of the producers may have the person. Well, that, someone teleprompted it, right? But we we didn't know what she said. Just that that she wanted to add something right. to her speech. Okay. Um. And in the moment, like everything she was saying was like, "Oh yeah, we agree with this. Of course, like this is a this is about inclusivity and and yeah. and, and so respecting women in the space and and uh, and what people didn't the context that people don't really recognize is that a majority of the comments before that were making fun of Corey Froska myself every day. Yeah. I'm the fat guy that ate Morgan Webb. Corey's a black guy. Uh, Frost's a woman, Don't right? Like that. that's like literally what we see every day. I can say yeah. that because it's true. Uh, <laughs> I uh, ate her. Yeah, I I I ate Morgan she's Webb. She's gone now. Yeah, she's no. Um, uh, yeah, so so we had our own context in the room, which was yeah. 
we had been burned really hard because you didn't see those same comments on Attack of the Show. You didn't see it on the eSports show. You didn't see it on the other stuff. And you saw it specifically on X-Play. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where her, her heart came from and her passion came from. And all of us supported it. And in the moment, I support it. And I, I still no, believe in the message because mm -hmm. if you listen to it, she's not going after gamers. She's not like all men from the age of... 15 to 55 are evil like yeah. nowhere in there does she say that and she's not specifically going after a race of a person a religion of a person yeah. it's just she's sharing her experience because that's the experience she's had in esports yeah and to see it happen again here in this revitalized inclusive version of of, of g4 was a bummer because yeah it's about the future right some of our hosts are are gay some of our hosts are are different race like mm -hmm. it's not the same thing you saw back in the early days and it, it's not like we were championing it every day to be like this is what we're about you know we let the comedy of those situations dictate it especially with attack of the show um and so in the moment we were very supportive but when the show was over during the break we were kind of relaxing and, and the twitch chat was in very much support. Like, the, yeah. the, we yeah. saw the well, Those are the homies. Those are the ones the, that yeah. are the, Because they experienced everything from A to B right. without yeah. a clip. The YouTube chat was the exact opposite. Really? They were, they were, oh. pretty, they were pretty ticked. Um, but there was, like, to give you an idea, like, the YouTube chat was, like, a handful of folks talking at once. The Twitch chat was Twitch chat, so it's flying fast. Right. And, right. And, yeah. and the message online was supportive, and, like, people were covering it and retweeting it, and the love was there. And then a day later, the love disappeared, yeah. and it became a different narrative. Um, a lot of content creators that I have had personal relationships turn their back on me, um, you know, blocking or 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 making up stories about me or and whatever it may be. Posting a lot of videos, posting a lot of videos, celebrating the downfall. Well, that was yeah. Weird. Went you know go what was it, what was the phrase they went go woke go broke that they kept yeah. saying. That's that whole thing really pissed me off because like. Like I used to watch G4 all the time too. I just thought from the inception of G4 for the the revitalization of G4, I was like, I don't know if that's gonna work these days. Making like content, like making uh, a TV show type stuff and putting it on Twitch and whatever. Yeah. And I think to blame the whole downfall that was on my going question. woke or making it. Yeah. Uh, my second about question that? was, do you blame the downfall of G4 on that moment? No, of course not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Why not? Because there were decisions made before any of us showed up that were set in stone. Yeah. That we just could not avoid.